First, a laminectomy of C4, C5, and C6 is carried out. These are the instruments used to prepare the hole for the most cranial screw. Left to right, the awl, the 2.4 millimeter drill bit with stop, the handle with quick coupling, the drill sleeve with scale, and the depth gauge. Instead of the handle with quick coupling, a power tool can be used. The center of the lateral mass is located. The entry point of the lateral mass screw is found 2 mm medial and 2 mm caudal to the center of the posterior aspect of the lateral mass. A pilot hole is created with the awl. This hole helps to prevent the drill from being displaced when it's first inserted. The screw has to diverge at least 25 degrees laterally so that the screw tip will be located far away from the vertebral artery and the nerve root. At the same time, the cranial angle must not exceed 30 degrees. Anything more would impede rod insertion. The 2.4 millimeter drill bit with stop is connected to the handle with quick coupling. The drill sleeve is set to 14 millimeters, which is the most common screw length. The latch is slid back to release the inner tube of the drill sleeve. The position of the inner tube is adjusted. The depth can be seen in the window. The drill is then inserted into the drill sleeve. The drill is placed at the correct angle. If necessary, the drill sleeve can be adjusted by two millimeters to reach the required depth. The exit point of the drill is shown, although with the axon system, it's not always necessary to perforate the opposite cortex of the lateral mass. The length of the screw is determined using the depth gauge. The reading on the depth gauge corresponds to the length of the screw needed. The screwdriver with threaded holding sleeve and freely rotating outer sleeve is used to insert the screw. The screw is engaged by pushing down the holding sleeve and turning the knurled section clockwise until the screw is rigidly fixed. The screw is inserted into C3. As the screw is being introduced, the outer sleeve of the screwdriver is held, not the knurled section. The screw should not be inserted beyond the point where the variable axis head can still move freely. The holding sleeve then is disengaged by turning the knurled section anti-clockwise. The unrestricted movement of the variable axis head makes it easier to insert the rod. Once the screw is in place, the process is repeated at C4 and C6. The alignment tool may be used to help line up the variable axis heads in the correct position. A trial rod is used to determine the lordosis of the cervical spine segment that will be fused, as well as the length of the rod needed. For the next step, the rod is contoured with the bending pliers. The 3.5 mm titanium rod is bent to match the curve of the trial rod. Once the lordosis of the rod matches the lordosis of the trial rod, the rod is inserted into the variable axis heads of the screws using the holding forceps. These are the instruments used to attach the rod and lock the construct. From left to right, the star drive screwdriver shaft, the handle with the two newton meter torque limiter, 
and the rod insertion instrument. The star drive screwdriver shaft is connected to the torque limiting handle. This handle is identified by the two Newton meters marked on the top. To help insert the locking screw, the cannulated rod insertion instrument is used. This rod insertion instrument looks very similar to the remobilization instrument that's also in the set. The difference between them is that the rod insertion instrument has a cannulation through which the locking screw may be inserted into the variable axis screw head, whereas the remobilization instrument does not. Because of the pull-out forces that the rod insertion instrument might exert on the bone screw, the cannulated rod pusher has to be used to insert the locking screw in cases where the bone quality is poor. The rod insertion instrument is placed over the variable axis screw head. The handle is squeezed. The rod is inserted into the screw head. The self-retaining star drive screwdriver is used to pick up a locking screw. The locking screw is slid through the cannulation of the rod insertion instrument. The screwdriver first is rotated a quarter turn anti-clockwise so that the threads of the locking screw are seated correctly. The locking screw then is provisionally tightened. The rod insertion instrument provides counterforce while removing the screwdriver. The rod insertion instrument is released and removed. This procedure is repeated for the screws at C3 and C6. The most caudal implant is now selected. In this exercise, a hook is inserted under the lamina of C7. Depending on the shape of the lamina, the lamina may have to be prepared to allow for the hook to fit properly. The hook is picked up by placing the tips of the holding forceps in the grooves of the hook. The hook is inserted under the lamina and over the rod. The hook is tightened with the hexagonal screwdriver. The left side is instrumented in the same way as the right side. The final tightening of the locking screws and the variable axis screws is done using the star drive screwdriver with the torque limiting handle. The rod pusher used to provide counter torque is placed over the screw head. The screwdriver is inserted through the rod pusher and tightened until there's a click in the torque limiting handle. The screwdriver is removed using the rod pusher to provide counter force. These steps are repeated on all the screws. The stabilization between C3 and C7 is now complete. If required, a lamina substitute can be mounted for fixation of the musculature and protection of the dura. For this purpose, a lamina clamp is mounted on each side and provisionally stabilized using the hexagonal screwdriver. A rod cut to the appropriate length is then introduced through both clamps and the set screws are tightened. The construct is now complete. Usually bone graft would be placed under and around the rod to provide a solid fusion mass. Remobilizing the variable axis screw heads is necessary if the construct has to be adjusted. The locking screws and the rod are removed. The variable axis screw heads are still stable. To remobilize them, the remobilizing instrument is used. This instrument is not cannulated. This instrument is placed over the locked screw head. The handle is squeezed, and the screw head is remobilized. This step is repeated on the other levels. The screw heads are once again freely mobile. 